Hey, awesome. Welcome to Discovery Church, you guys. I am so glad that you are here again. Hey, can we just pause for a moment, too, and and reflect on last week? Wasn't that a powerful four-year anniversary? Wasn't that awesome just to reflect on what God has done and look forward to what God will do? Um, I just wanted to say, too, that and just kind of applaud you and kudos to Discovery Church for this. We actually had the highest non-holiday attendance ever in the history of Discovery Church. 917 people showed up. So kudos to you guys. Give yourselves a hand. Come on, you guys. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, 38 people gave their life to Christ. I mean, dang, God is... God continues to move, and I just, I just love to be a part of a vibrant, moving, powerful, full of Jesus church. Can I get an amen, somebody? Isn't it, isn't it good to be a part of a, a, a church that is alive? I love it, man. So I just want to say, well done, and I love you guys. If you don't know anything about this series that we're in and we're starting today, uh, you asked for it is what it's called. And the reason why we call it that is because you did ask for it. So last Easter, we did a survey. And this is the second year we've done this. So we had a survey that we, we put out on Easter Sunday. And we basically polled you and said, hey, what is it that you want to hear me preach about? Like, what do you want to know what the Bible says about a certain topic? And so what we did is we came up with the top three most asked questions that you have. We'll be doing that for a three-week series here at Discovery. So the top two, just to let you know, the one and two were like so close. They were neck and neck with with the number one spot. But the number one spot this year went to today's message, which is how do I handle stress? How do I handle stress is the number one thing that you guys asked for. The second one that was like right close to it was, was, uh, what, what about spiritual warfare? Like, I like, what is that? How do I? So that was the second most asked question. I'm really looking forward to that. We'll tackle that next week. We'll talk about spiritual warfare, what that is. And and the reality of that, okay? And then we're going to close it out with your third top question. You asked for it, and that is, how do I deal with difficult people? Come on. Now. So, so you don't know it, but you, you were somebody else's difficult pe- person, okay? That, that's why it was so high. It had to have been some of you, okay? Some of you are difficult in here, but this is going to be fun. I'm really I'm excited about this. It's going to be very practical but powerful teaching series over these three weeks. And I'm already, I am, I'm looking forward to this practical series, but I'm looking forward to as well this next series we're going. Can I just kind of, in October, I just, it, we're doing a series called Unmasked. Unmasked. And the big idea of this is God cannot heal what you don't reveal. Okay. And so I'm really, man, I'm, I'm stoked about these messages. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to October again and digging into the word of God and, and it really peeling off some of the layers so God can really impact and change our lives. So today though, part one, of you ask for it. How do we handle stress? We're going to jump in here in the book of Proverbs, you guys, the book of Proverbs. You guys said, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. And you know, what time is service over, by the way? Because I have a lot to do, pastor. It's like, and I know it. I know you're busy. I know it's the pace of life. It's culture. Let's just jump in. Proverbs 17, 24. It says, an intelligent person. So I want to be smart. I want to be an intelligent, you know, person. Check it out. He aims or he focuses at wise action. So he's, he's thinking about what he wants his life to look like, what he wants from his life. But a fool, and I don't want to be one of those, but unfortunately, the rest of this verse says that a lot of us can be fools. A fool starts off in many directions. I've got a lot of things going on in my life. But a, so an intelligent person aims at a few wise actions, but a fool runs off in many directions directions. I really don't have to rehearse a lot about stress or the hurried pace that we have. That's really, that we know it's messing up our, our lives. The hurried pace that we live, we know is, is messing things up. Um, and I don't, like I said, have to rehearse too much of that. Uh, but I know we all know that we all know the stress of life. We all know the pace of life and the culture that we, that we live in. I know this. I, I, I've been through some stressful seasons of my life. I remember uh, before we launched Discovery Church, when we started, this was one of the most stressful seasons that I was in, was before we launched, I, I was actually a full-time pastor at another church on staff. And, and so to prepare for Discovery Church, you know, I, I, I got a secular full-time job, was managing a respiratory company, running a business, in, a respiratory business here in Bakersfield. And, um, and then we started this journey. But, but we didn't know like it was going to snowball like it did. And it just like 
it really did. It snowballed and it multiplied and, and it was demanding so much more of my time uh, early than I thought it would. And it, and it got to a place where there were some red flags raised up in my life, in my marriage. In, 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 I was getting angry at things. I was, I was um, frustrated. I was um, kind of not, not was able to focus, things like that. There were just some red flags and my wife could see it. Veronica could see it, and she came up to me one day in this journey of just doing now this, this church that just keeps growing, and we're trying to catch up to it and working full-time. Actually, and it wasn't, it, you know, management is not full-time. It's like 50, 60 hours of, a, a week. And, and so um, she saw the flags, and she said, Honey, I think it's time for me to go back to work. Well, just to let you know, Lou, uh, Veronica worked prior to us having kids, but this was a decision we made. It's not a decision everyone makes, but a decision we made was when we started having kids, Veronica was going to stay home, and she was just going to raise the kids, and, and that's something that we both kind of you know, valued and committed to, and so we made, we adjusted our life for that, for that lifestyle. So she hadn't really worked a job for 10 years. She's got her degree, but she hasn't worked in a decade, and she says, honey, there's some red flags. I, I, think, I think God is telling me I need to, I need to go and, and get a job and help out. And I said, amen, you're hearing from God. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm about to die. I'm, about to, I'm getting crushed by this. So thankfully, she goes and, yeah, she gets a job. And, and man, and, and so, but honestly, I really feel like I did, today's service, you guys, today's service for some of us, you know who you are. Maybe you don't, but maybe God can reveal some things here today. But, but God told me to raise a red flag to wave the red flag here at, at Discovery Church. That some of us are closer to burnout than we think. So, some of us are, are, are burning the candle at both ends. You're, 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 you're doing way too much, way too often. And in today's, and I, I heard from God this week that today's service is a red flag. There's some warning signs that, that, need, to be, that need to be raised because when, when, when we get in a hurried pace and we, and we get all stressed out, and our pace of life is hurried, there are some symptoms that happen, just like it happened to me. It's happening to you guys. You guys asked for it, so you, don't, you know this. Let me show you some of these symptoms that the Bible says show up when you are, you're experiencing this pace of life, this hurried life. Write them down if you're taking notes with me. Write them down, you guys. Here's number one. What happens when you're all hurried and stressed? Number one, well, my resistance is lower. My resistance is is lower. So let me say it this way. When I'm stretched beyond my limit, when I'm, when I'm overburdened, when I'm kind of overworked and I'm not slowing down and my pace is all hurried, what happens is my ability to say no is hindered. Especially, listen, especially to sin. My ability to say no to those temptations and to those familiar sins, it increases. So uh, you're going to notice that you make your worst decisions when you're tired. You make your best decisions when you're rested. You make your, you need, you make your worst decisions when you're tired, and you make your best decisions when you're rested. And you got to be careful because when you're weary, your resistance is lower. Jesus talked about this in Luke 21, verse 34. He said, be careful. There's a flag. Jesus raising a flag. Red flag. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down by carousing. That means this careless living, carousing, with drunkenness and the anxieties of of life. That's why you guys asked for it. The anxieties of life. You've got to be careful because on that day, he says, that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. Like he didn't know it was going to happen. It wasn't going to unfold that way, but it did. It kind of came on you suddenly. Now, part of my job as your pastor is to help you preempt some of those things, some of those occurrences from ever even happening. So you can either, you can take it to the place where you're completely falling apart and your marriage is in disarray and you're and your, your relationship with God is in disarray. You're, or you can take this message to heart today and do something about it. Here's the second symptom. Write it down. The second symptom that happens, we're in a hurried pace, and that is my emotions are inconsistent. My emotions are inconsistent. In other words, you probably asked another question if this was you. You asked a question like, why am I so easily angered? Why do I get so upset so easily? Why am I frustrated? You tell yourself like, like man, this isn't me. Like, this isn't me. This isn't the real me. I used to be fun. How many of you lie to yourself like that? No, I'm kidding. I used, to be, I used to be a fun person. I used to, you know what I mean? I used to have joy. This isn't me. And it's quite possible that even, even people around you that know you, like maybe your spouse or your friends go, they, they say you're out of character. They say something's wrong. 
They may have even said that, like, something's wrong with you. You're just, you're just not, the, you're not the same. It's, it's, something's different. It's a, red, it's a red flag because the symptom of a hurried life is this, that your emotions are inconsistent. Job talked about this a little bit in chapter 9, verse 25. He says, my days go by faster than a runner. Man, they just, it just is one thing after the other. Man, they just fly by. Where'd the time go? They fly away without me seeing any joy. It robs me of my joy. And I get mad easier. Like, it doesn't take that much to, to get you there. You're, you're already there. It just takes you, like, a little, and you're already flying off the handle. You're already, you're already frustrated. You're poised for frustration and a blowout. You're out of character. And I'm saying again, today I'm raising the red flag at Discovery Church, okay? There's a red flag waving here at Discovery Church, and God wants you to hear. You need to be careful. It could be your pace of life. And again, you already know it because you asked for it, okay? Here's the third thing that you're going to notice when you have this hurried pace of life, and that is that your productivity suffers. Your productivity suffers. And this one's interesting. This one's kind of like an ox. It's paradoxical almost because you think by working harder, working longer, you are getting more done. And it didn't work out, did it? It's not, it's not working out that way. That somehow by working harder, working longer, you actually are doing less. You're getting less done by doing more. Why? Because it's this principle of sharpening the axe. It's a principle of, of stopping, of pausing, so you can keep using your axe, you know, keep, keep chopping away at stuff, or you can stop once in a while. You can, you can just pause once in a while and sharpen the axe. See, what, what would take a sharp axe, one swing to maybe chop down that tree, is taking you 50 times you're chopping away at it because you're saying, I don't got time to slow down, Pastor. I don't got time to stop. You don't know my schedule. You don't know what I'm doing. There ain't, no, ain't nobody got time to rest. Ain't nobody got time for, 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 for that, Pastor. No, 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 no. It's, it's this principle. It's, it really is a supernatural principle. Uh, it's the same principle of the tithe. It's like, like God can supernaturally cause more to be done with 90%. Than he can with 100%. Like, it doesn't make sense. It really, it really doesn't because it's supernatural. This is the same, it's the same supernatural principle that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And it's something that is countercultural. It's very old school, but we need to go back a little bit old school to, to get our, our, ourselves back in line and stop living this hurried pace. Look what the Bible says uh, in, in Proverbs 21. Verse 5, it says, careful planning puts you ahead in the long run, but hurry and scurry puts you further behind. Like you thought, man, if I just work harder, if I could just stay up longer, maybe, maybe if I just do more, and what the, the result of that is like you just fell further behind. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2 says that a person in a hurry makes mistakes. How many got a testimony? How many got a car ticket to prove that one, right? Any in a hurry? Yeah, people in hurry... <laughs> They make mistakes. That's what happens. This is, this is just the symptoms. I'm just, I'm just trying to show you the symptoms of what happens. When you get in a hurried pace of life, when you fall in line with the culture, and you buy up every time and every moment that you have is bought up by something in life. Here's the next thing that happens when you live this kind of way, stressed and hurried. And that is you're going to see that your life will lose meaning. You feel like it. You're going to feel like you're getting further away from your purpose, because your purpose isn't to do a lot of things. Do you know that? Your purpose is not to do a lot of things. Your purpose, God's purpose for you, is to do a very few things. That's what he wants. Let, let me say it this way. You're not good at everything, nor should you be a part, nor should you try to be a part of everything or involved in everything. God has a sweet spot for you here. We make it really simple for you here at Discovery. That sweet spot is love God, Love each other, make a difference, and change the world. I mean, that looks different for every one of you, but that's a, there's a sweet spot for you right there to love God passionately, be an authentic community in loving others, and making a difference with the gifts and the time that God has given you. There is a sweet spot. See, what happens is we get all, we try to do too much, and, and, and you start doing a bunch of things, you're going to find out real quickly that you're not even good at your sweet spot anymore. 
So you're not even good at the very thing God created you for because other things are buying up your energy and your time. You're doing things that God didn't even intend for you to do. And they may be good things. Now, I'm not saying you're not, I mean, you're filling your time, I'm sure, with, with good things. But it's making you ineffective for your purpose. Good preaching, Pastor. Man, good job. Amen. I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Psalm, sometimes I got to encourage myself because I ain't getting it from you guys. So in order just to keep going here, I'm like, all right, Pastor, amen. And give yourself an amen. Psalm 39 says, we are merely moving shadows and all of our busy rushing. Like it, in the end, it means it's like it ends in nothing, he says. In other words, an aimless, meaningless life. And this is a tragic one right here because because like the big purpose of discovery is this big idea is to help you get you to your sweet spot. That's why we call it discovery even. Like we want you not only to discover Christ, but to discover who you are in Christ and to do what God has called you to do. That's the big idea. So when you find your purpose, which is, which is what, by the way, that Next Steps announcement was all about, which is happening next month, October 1st. If you don't know what that purpose is, you got to come to those, give me two weeks, two weeks to help you identify what God has you. And we're going to help you find your purpose. But when you do, listen, when you find your purpose, that means saying no to a lot of other things. It does. I mean, it's like, thank you. Amen. I'm t- I'm, thank you. Someone needs to say amen. I'll preach better when you say stuff like that. I promise. Let me help you find something here. Okay, here's, here's, here's the last one. It's important. Because when I'm in a hurry, my relationship with God seems distant. It's not that it actually is distant. This is important though. This is, this is important. My relationship with God, when I'm in a, in a hurry and I'm scurrying and I'm stressed, it, it's, he's not distant, but it seems like he's a million miles away. So, so when you're in a hurry and you pray, you're praying, you feel like you're hitting a ceiling. You feel like, man, are my, are my prayers even doing anything? I don't even feel like they're getting very far away from me when in fact, like, like I feel like you even think like, man, God feels like he's a million miles away. I feel so distant from God. And the truth cannot, it cannot be even further from the truth. God's word says that he is ever present, that he will never leave you. But it's, the problem is that you, you have competing voices. You're hurried in pace of life. You can't hear or sense the presence of God. I'm telling you, he's there. He just seems like He's distance. We need to do this in Psalm 46. This is what we need to do. Be still. Just, just, just be just still. Stop buying up all your time with stuff. Stop buying. Every, every moment of free time, you find a fill spot. You got to go on social media or you got to schedule something else or you got to do. Just be still. Why? Well, what's, what's the big idea of being still? Because then you'll know that I am God. Look, you won't, you won't really know that he is God unless you, unless you be still. Unless you can get quiet. Because some of you, the reason why you're not still is because you're doing everything, trying everything. You're, you're, you just grab a hold of every reins and you're trying to do it all yourself. There's not even any room for God to show up in your life because you're not still. Be still and know, he says, I am in control. I am. I'm God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 6. It is better. I want you to say that word out loud with me. It is better. It's better to have only a little. Wait a second, Pastor. I don't like little. We're in the land of the free, the home. No, come on, man. It's, no, no, this is, I'm telling you, this is counterculture. It really is. But I'm trying to help you here because, because you know, this topic of handling stress, this was one of your top topics last year. And which means I didn't preach very good last year is what happened. I'm just, so I'm, today I'm trying to bring you something a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit different than last year's topic about stress. Um, but I'd like to preach something different next year, okay? So when it comes to Easter again, I'm trying to get this off your top list. I'm trying to help you out here because it is better. It's better. I need you to buy into that. It's better to have only a little with peace of mind. See, that's the key. That's what you need. It's, it's not worth it. It's better to have little with peace of mind than to be busy all the time. It's better. So here's the problem with this kind of message, okay? And the, and the fact that I do have to kind of preach this so, so much, because I sat and I thought, 
they know, like you know there's a problem. You ask for it. So you know that the, there's, we're hurried. We know our pace of life is inconsistent with what can actually you, we do. And so we're living, so we know. So the problem isn't that we know the stuff. The problem is we know it, we're just not doing it. Because the problem, so I was thinking, I was like, God, the problem isn't with our knowing. Because I can bring you truth today. I can bring you truth. And I, but, but truth unapplied is not going to help you. So what I need to do today, what I need to do is to bring you application. I need to bring you some application to the truth. Because obviously you know what to do. It's just a matter of doing it. So write down this thought. I hope you can get it into you, into every one of us today. And that is that the distance between the truth I know and the truth I live equals the pain I experience. Okay, this is true of everything. There is a truth you know about that addiction. There is the truth you know about that habit, that attitude. There is the truth that you know, and the truth that you live equals the pain you experience. So, so there's a gap between what I know and what I'm doing, and we need to narrow the gap between the truth I know and the truth I live when it comes to this area of our pace of life and the stress we're experiencing. And guess what? When I can narrow that gap, I'm going to have less pain. I'm going to have less stress, less worry, less of all these symptoms that, by the way, every single one of us experience. We all do. We all experience these. No one is kind of, um, you know, above any of this stuff. So what is the truth that we need to apply? Like, I know what to do. I know I, know I need to slow down. That's what I know. I know I need, to, I need to slow down, Pastor. I need to live a more focused life. I need to be in less of a hurry and scurry and live more intentionally, live with focus and with aim. What's going to help me do that? Well, God didn't give us a whole bunch of solutions on this topic. He didn't. In his word, there's not a bunch of solutions God gave on this. There's one. And I'm going to give you that one today. I'm not going to give you a new answer. It's the same answer. Instead, but instead of just giving you the principle, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you apply it today. So here's the principle, okay? And yes, this is old school. Yes, this is countercultural. Let me explain it. Here's the principle. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Now, let me kind of explain here because um, the Sabbath day is not so much about the day as it is about the principle, Jesus showed that in his life. You, go, you can go research this. Some people think it's like a certain day, and there's some people that, that they, they say it's this day or that day. Look, at, it's, it, the day is not important. as much. It really isn't. It's the principle of the Sabbath day that is important. This is God's plan for burnout. This is God's plan for having less stress in your life. So I'm going to show you a few words in this sentence and highlight them for you. This isn't in your notes. But let me hi highlight some of these words, because first, you got to learn how to keep it. You got to learn how to, in, in other words, you got to grab hold of it. You got to say, like Truett Cathy, the founder of Chick-fil-A, I don't care what everybody else says. I'm not going to try to prioritize making more money over honoring God. I'm going to shut it down once a week. Once a week, I'm going to shut this thing down on Sundays Chick-fil-A made a decision, Truett Cathy made a decision uh, uh, when, they, when he first started, and everyone said, you're dumb. You're not going to make it in business. Everybody else is open. You, 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 you're, this isn't going to work. Well, he proved them wrong, didn't he? He said, I'm going I'm to prioritize God over money, over all this other stuff, and, and you know what? And God will still make me successful. And then tell me, can I, can you tell me that's a successful business model right there? In fact, he said, I would like to be remembered before he died. He said, I would like to be remembered as a person who lived according to their, uh, according to their principles. Can I encourage you today, church, to live by principle, not by pressure? To, to make up your mind about what you believe and don't let anybody knock you away from it. You got to keep it. You got to keep, here's the other key word, keep the Sabbath day. Because some of you say, man, I did. I, I honor the Lord on this Sabbath. I came to church. But it doesn't say Sabbath hour. It says Sabbath day. Come on, let's keep it real. I'm trying to help you with some application today. So, you get it, you, so your pace of life is more consistent with God's 
power with his, with his word. I mean, and so these symptoms don't keep showing up in your life. It says, keep the Sabbath day holy. And I'm telling you that, that I've been applying a principle for years now of this, of this principle of honoring a Sabbath. And I'm going to show you kind of how in, in a minute, but I, could, I work hard. I work a lot, but I, I rest good, you guys. I feel good. I am, I am rested. I, I want you to have this posture, a different posture of your life so these symptoms don't show up. And so I can preach something, be, something different next year, okay? We're going to say this. Here's, here's the next word. Keep the Sabbath day holy. It's holy. We're going to say this, day, this is supernatural. This is God's. This is precious. This is a priority. This is, this is unique here. And I don't even fully understand it, but it's more than a natural principle. It's a supernatural principle that when I apply this, that God is able to sharpen me and I'm able to go further, faster, beyond that which I can do when I just keep chopping away at every activity under my list. Pastor Jason, that sounds like an Old Testament law now, though. You bring in the old, no, no, this is actually in the New Testament. You know that? This is a New Testament principle. Let me show it to you in Hebrews chapter four, verse nine. It says, there remains, this is New Testament, after Jesus, there is still, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works. In fact, the Jewish people believed, and I believe it, that every time you Sabbath, you declare to God that more gets done when I don't do everything I know how to do. That's what you declare. That's what the Jewish people believed. That when you have a Sabbath, what you're saying to God, God, more gets done when I don't do everything I know how I know I, I could do, because my strength actually doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from my abilities. It doesn't even come from my energy. It doesn't come from my intellect. It doesn't come from my time. My strength comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord, not from me. That's what the Sabbath declares. When you have a rest, when you have a pause, but you know what? The same, you're declaring something when you dishonor and you, you don't have a Sabbath rest. You're actually declaring, God, more gets done when I do it. Look, I'm just telling you, that's not the posture that you want to have towards, towards God. That God more gets done when I, when I do it. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest, also rests from their works. And God modeled it for us. He created in six, stopped on seven, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter in that rest. What rest? The Sabbath rest. And I'm going to help you because I was thinking, what else can I tell you that you don't really already know? What else can I tell you other than, hey, do the Sabbath? Well, I can, I can kind of help you understand what that looks like when you do it. So I can help you apply now the Sabbath and give you what it looks like when you do it. So let me explain what the Sabbath day should look like. Okay, because yeah, on the Sabbath day, you should come to church. I mean, come to church, come to Discovery. Your Sabbath should include some praise, some worship. It should include some hands raised saying, God, you are holy, you are righteous, you alone are worthy, God. I declare I need you. God, take my day. Take this day, the rest of my week, everything on my agenda, God. I can't do it without you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. My help comes from the Lord. There should be some worship up in your, in your Sabbath day. But, but does your Sabbath rest now stop when you pull out of your parking spot and leave? No, it doesn't. There's some things now your day, your day should look like some things if it's a true Sabbath rest. And if you really want to posture your life in such a way that, that can, can have the supernatural benefits of this rest, it's got to look like this. Let me give you some things of what your Sabbath day should look like. Here it is. Write it down. Number one, and I, and I actually put these as declarations. I will, because I want them to be. I want to be declarations for you today that you're, we're going to declare, I will honor God. Here it is the first one. I will rest my body. I will rest my body. Now, I know we got rock stars and monster energy drinks and 
you know, you know, lattes and extra shots and everything to help you do more than you ever really could do on your own. But, but that you can do that. You can take another shot or you can, you can do it God's way. Now I'm not against, you know, I'm against coffee. I'm, I love my caffeine, man. Come on now. I do. But, but, but there needs, if you constantly are doing that without a pause, without a rest, I'm telling you, God's way is, is it's, it's better. You can continue to do that stuff, or you can just do God's plan, which is slow down and rest. And that's why I'm recommending today. Some of you need to cancel your plans today that you got for this afternoon. You just need to, you just need to cancel what, what, the stuff that's on your list of, of your agenda today. And, and, and I'm telling you, you ought, to, you ought to go home and take a nap or something, okay? You just rest your body. Rest your body. And when you wake up from your nap, tell your wife, honey, let's go for a walk. And then pick her up off the floor because she fainted when you told her that. <laughs> pick her on up off the floor, lift her up, and say, and say, this is what a walk looks like, honey. And, and, and hey, let's, this is what my hand looks like. Why don't you, let's, and look at that. They fit together. And I know, I know we haven't done this in eight years, but this is my hand. Here's hands go like this. And, and I'm telling you, just get some rest for your body. Go for a stroll. Relax. Here's what Jesus says to just rest, slow, slow down. Or actually, Psalm 127. It says, in vain, you rise early tomorrow. You're going to rise early, and then you're going to stay up late because you've got a few things to do. Monday's a busy day. You've got a lot to do. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna toil for food to eat, but God grants sleep to those he loves. And, and I don't, maybe this is for you, and this is, I mean, God, God asked me to ask a few questions here. Here's another one, okay? And that is, how, how are you sleeping? How are you sleeping? Could it be that your pace of life, could it be that, the, that, that the, all the directions that you are running in, the lack of focus and aim at your purpose and design by God, could it be that it is robbing you of the rest that God wants to give you? I don't know. You guys asked for this. so I have a feeling this is hitting some of you today. I'm just trying to narrow the gap between the truth we know and the truth we live. We need to narrow the gap today. I will, come on somebody, I will rest my body on my Sabbath day. Okay, here's the second declaration. If you're going to have a Sabbath day, if you're going to have a Sabbath rest, that is, I will replenish my soul. I will replenish my soul. So you have, you have emotions that today, they're like, they're not in good condition. They're not in, because, I mean, that's why you're getting mad so easy. I'm tell, and I'm telling you, it's not you. It's not you, sir. It's not you, ma'am. You're out of character. That's a warning sign. That's a red flag that your, your pace of life needs to just slow it down. It's a warning sign that you violated a principle. We need to narrow this gap. And I'm going to give you three things that will help you replenish your soul on your Sabbath day. You need to do... Replenish your soul with these three things. Here's number one, with quietness. With quietness. I practice something called solitude. That's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's not good in, 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 you know, in excess, but that is a good thing to have in moderation, to get yourself some solitude. I practice that at least once. I try to practice it twice a day, where when I get up in the morning, I got some quiet time, solitude, where I just think and reflect and pray and read God's scriptures. At the end of the day, I try to think and reflect on my day. Did I, did I treat my family, my wife? Was I, did I make a difference today? Was I a good pastor today? Did I do what I can? Just some simple solitude, some quietness. Psalm 23 says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. You know, you don't eat all the times at it, that green pasture. Sometimes you lay at it. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my emotions, my soul, my mind. He restores me. You need to work some quietness in your day. Just sit down, turn on some music, get on some worship, read, your, read the scriptures. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Take out your Sunday teaching notes. Look over those again. That's why we give you the notes. You can go over them. Look over them again later on today, later on in the week. Replenish your soul with quietness. Here's the second thing. Replenish your soul with some enjoyment. With some enjoyment, man. Come on. Go watch some football today or something and, 
Go relax. I'm t- have, a, have a pizza. You know what I mean? I mean, if that's too much for you, have some, get some enjoyment into your Sabbath. A good rule of thumb here is if your work, if you're like day job, if your work is physically strenuous, your enjoyment, you need to find some enjoyment that is mentally activating and, and stimulating. If your, main, if your job throughout the week is mentally activating and strenuous, you need a physical enjoyment. That's just a good rule of thumb for you to find true rest on that day. By the way, my Sabbath day is a Monday. I Sabbath on Monday. Sunday's not a Sabbath for me. I work hard on Sunday. Lionel Richie was not a pastor. You know that? You know, because he said it's easy like Sunday morning. My Sunday morning ain't easy. It's easy like Monday morning to me. That's what's easy, you know? It doesn't have to be the day. It's just, it's, it's, it's not the day. It doesn't have to be a church day that you go to church. You just need to find a day to obey the principle and to operate by a day of rest. There needs to be some enjoyment. You know, another thing for me, not only does there need to be some enjoyment that's, you know, uh, physically activating for me because I have a mentally activating job, but they're also, I like, on my, on my Sabbath, I like me some food, man. Get some good, get some food, okay? Because if you look at that word stress, this isn't in your notes, but if you look at that word stressed, that word stress, the opposite of that, you just flip it around. The opposite of stress is get you some desserts, man. Come on. That's a Sabbath rest right there. That's just, you know, first Jason 3.1. That's not Bible, okay, at all. That's not Bible. I think church should be, you should get some laughter in your Sabbath. You should have some fun and enjoy. I think church should be fun. I think church should be enjoyable as well, and we should laugh. I coach pastors on this that I'm helping coach preach and stuff. I, I ask them, hey, where in your message is there some funny? Because people don't need to know. You just ain't pointing the finger at them so, uh, the whole day, telling them how terrible they are. Put some funny in there. You know why? Because there's a biblical principle. Proverbs 17 says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Man, that's, that's a restore you. It's, it's, you need to get a dose of that, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Are you guys getting anything out of this today? Yeah. I'm trying to answer your question because you guys asked for it, okay? I'm trying to give you some app. There's an application message. There's a red flag waving, and some of you are probably closer to the burnout than you realize. In fact, in my research, I, I, I read somewhere in one article that it says that 62% of Americans are already at the burnout stage. Like, we're already there. We're like, hey, too late, pastor. I'm like, I'm already at the end of my, end of my rope. So replenish your soul with quietness, with enjoyment. Here's the third thing you replenish your soul with, with people. With people. That's God's plan. I know what some of you are thinking, though. You're saying, no, Jason, those are the ones causing the stress. <laughs> that's, that's, some of you are thinking, if I could get away from some people, I could have a Sabbath. Praise God. I just need to get away, Pastor. That's the problem here. I can't get away from them. Well, you're just around the wrong people. That's what it is. Because there are some of, there are some of God's people that will lift you that will add value, that, that you need some people who are praying for you, who are encouraging you, who aren't a drain on your life, who are adding energy and enjoyment to you, who are going to have your back, who can take your hand in the, in the difficult time and say, I got your back. We're going to go through this together. You say, that sounds good. Where can I get me some of that? I want to sign up. Small groups. Small groups. And you are not too late. We just launched those small groups. You need to be in one. Can I tell you something? I'm not trying to be rude at all, but But if you're not in a community of believers like that, the Bible says you're a fool. I'm not trying to be rude at all. The Bible says a fool runs off in a bunch of directions. I'm a fool if I don't let people around me, if I don't let people in, if I'm going through tough time, tough season, and I don't reach out to an elder, a brother in Christ, and say, hey, I need your help. I need some support. Can you pray for me? The Bible says we're, we're full. Look at Hebrews 10, 25 says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but you need a place where you're encouraging, where there's some encouragement for one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. So you're not too late. You are not, get, get connected to a small group, okay? You can go online and do that through the app. You can do it through the connection card, but get connected to a small group. Okay, here's the third thing. We're gonna rest our bodies. We're gonna replenish our souls. Here's number three. We need to refocus our spirit on God. I will refocus my spirit on God. So the day is for refocusing. That's what this day is for. It's just a refocus to put, 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 put things in, in proper perspective. So before you check out on me, okay, just put your things in your lap. Don't click the notebooks and stuff just yet, okay? Hold on. 
because, because as I was praying this week, the Lord, the Lord told me to pray this next verse, this psalm, to pray this over you and to declare some things over your life. So I want to I just, I want to pray over you. I want to declare some things over your life. So will you posture and get ready just to receive? As I read this verse, I don't want you to just hear it. I want you to actually receive as we read it. You can, you can pray with your eyes open. It's okay. We're gonna, but I want to declare some things that the Lord told me to declare over your life today. And this is a psalm, Psalm 92. He says a psalm, a song. David turned this psalm into a song for the day you go to church. That's what it is. It's for the Sabbath day. He says, it is good for you to have a moment in your week where you praise the Lord, where you make music to his name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Now, if you do that, if you Sabbath, I pray this over you now. You have exalted. God will exalt your horn. The horn was the strongest part of the animal. And I pray in Jesus' name that today, as you have honored God by being in his presence today, that he brings you supernatural strength in the name of Jesus. I pray you receive that today. Supernatural strength. You say, man, I'm weary. Yeah, you should be weary. You should. God, I pray right now, supernatural strength over every person that God comes on you like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured out on me. That's supernatural anointing. That's ability. You're going to have ideas at work, at school, at home, dealing with your children. Like, where in the world did I get that idea? Where did that wisdom come from? It came from because you decided to honor God and obey a Sabbath and take a time to just sharpen your ax, I pray right now, supernatural strength, supernatural ability and anointing over your life in Jesus' name. And I pray that over you, that you, that you, the righteous, will flourish like a palm tree. That's everything else. Everything else is dead, but there's a palm standing in the middle of the desert. Just, just a palm tree. Everything else is burned out at work, and there you are, standing tall and strong, that you will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. You've honored God. You will flourish in the courts of God, and you will still bear fruit in old age. That's supernatural longevity. I pray in Jesus' name over every person right now, I declare supernatural strength, supernatural anointing and ability, and supernatural longevity in Jesus' name. Then when everybody else is wearing out, you stay fresh and green in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes right there.